Thank you for the introduction and welcome to my session. So today I'll be talking about the uh, ArcGIS Experience Builder. So this is the new application builder introduced by Esri. So moving on, let's take a look at the agenda. So what we're going to cover today, I'll start off with the web app building landscape. So I'll talk about the relationship to the web app builder, some statistics over here, and we will actually move on to the introduction to the experience builder itself. So we have a look at what's the experience builder all about. And next, we'll be moving to the design goals. So what Esri has in mind in when creating this uh, new application building platform, we will go into the key characteristics of the experience builder, uh, looking under the uh, hood, what it has to offer. And we'll take a look at the components of the GUI builder. And lastly, we'll take a, take a look at the uh, availability of the product offering. So moving on, <clears throat> we'll start off with the uh, web app building la uh, landscape. So a little introduction of the uh, traditional web app builder. So it was uh, introduced quite some time ago. It was extremely successful product. So it exceeded the expectation of Esri. And there was about 460,000 application was created using the ArcGIS Online. So that's actually uh, uh, excluding the ArcGIS Enterprise. So if we put that in a figure, that's about 1,000 uh, applications created daily. But technologies are keep on keeping on changing. So we got to stay in focus with this. We want to make sure we, we have better ways of doing things. We want to make sure we are focusing on the user experience and also in line with the new technology, which is the uh, JavaScript API. So that actually brings us to the new web app building product. And actually, that is the ArcGIS Experience Builder. So what is the ArcGIS Experience Builder all about? So this is the next generation web application builder. So it utilizes or based on the foundation and philosophy of the traditional web app builder. So utilizing a platform that requires no coding to actually create your application. Um, that's what we're focusing on to create a simple application, a dynamic application by using the concept of what you see is what you get. So a user will be able to interact with maps, widgets, button, list, text, and so on and so forth. And some of the capabilities that comes with the experience builder is that you have complete control over the layout and design elements. And moving on, you can get easily started with the provided templates and widgets. So if you don't have anything in mind to start off with, you can use the templates to get some ideas. Or if you have everything in place, you can also start from scratch where you can build your own application or web page. So looking at the design goals that has been implemented by Esri in creating this uh, new experience builder. So first of all, this focuses on the data driven. So even though we are creating a new experience builder, so our applications are still driven by our data to make it functional. So uh, without, without these data, these application would be meaningless, similar to the real life if you have, let's say you have a nice sports car, but without the driver, the uh, car would actually be meaningless. It won't go anywhere. So in this case, your data is actually your driver to the application. And the next focus is on the flexibility of the design. So we want to be able to uh, inject the flexible component of creating applications uh, where user can easily create these applications using widgets and stuff. And next is on the configurable. So you can actually drag and drop all these components to actually make up the dynamic application. And next is actually extensible. So if, let's say, the default is not enough, we can actually push this to our developers <clears throat> to create uh, more of a custom application. So we can get programmers to write custom codes and custom widgets to actually push to the experience builder. And next, we want to make sure the mobile adaptive. So today's um, situation is that everyone has a phone with them. So we spend much more time looking at our phone. So we want to be able to make sure an application is viewable within the desktop and is also optimized to be viewed on your mobile phone. And lastly, last next goal is actually to be in line with these modern uh, web technologies over here. So these are some of the goals that Esri has put in mind and decided to develop this new experience builder. Now, looking at the key characteristics of the experience builder itself, uh, it is actually a redesigned core framework based on the React JavaScript library. 
and it offers a modern, clean, and slick interface. So it provides you with a first-class user experience. It's built on the JavaScript uh, 4.x. <clears throat> and the next best thing is that previously, if you want to create 2D maps or 3D maps, you need to, have to actually create a separate application. 2D will focus on 2D, and 3D will focus on 3D. You can't actually have both in one. So that's the difference in Experience Builder. You can have both in one application uh, working to, uh, together with each other. And next, we want to shift from the map-centric design. So previously, we are focusing on the maps. So this is more of a page-centric design, giving you a new experience to use it. So map is not the main focus anymore. It doesn't necessarily have to be. And moving on, uh, let's take a look at the components of the GUI Builder itself. So you have the GUI Builder, where we'll use this canvas to actually create a new application or a responsive web page. And you have the ability to add templates to it. Now, you can also start from scratch, or you can use templates to get some designs to kickstart your uh, building application. Next, you have the widgets. So the widgets will actually power the dynamic capability of your applications. Widgets, for example, adding maps to them, uh, adding functional buttons. You have text descriptions, lists, and the list goes on and on. So the next one is themes. So what are themes? Themes allow you to actually uh, adjust the look and feel of your application. So you might want to change the color to make something pop, or you want to unleash the branding on your site. And next is the data sources. So as I said just now, we are focusing on a data-driven application. So data is actually important to make the functionalities work for your application. And lastly, it's going to be based on the new uh, JavaScript library, which is Jimu. So <clears throat> moving on, I'm going to show you a demonstration. First of all, I'm going to show you a sample uh, application or a page developed by Esri, which is using the Experience Builder. And then I'm going to start creating a simple rapid application uh, using the Experience Builder in the editor mode. So let's have a look. Right. So first of all, we go to the product website over here, the Experience Builder. So if you scroll down, you start to see this button over here that says Explore San Diego Applications. So if I were to click on that, it's going to bring me over here. Now, this is a sample application created using the Experience Builder. So let's, let's scroll down and have a quick look. So this is what we call a scrolling web page or a scrolling web application. This is focusing on some information that we want to highlight based on San Diego. And let's take a look at the components. So if we go on the left-hand side, this is the title of the application. And on the right-hand side, we have three menus over here. We have Home, Shortlist, and More. Side by side, we have text. We have some descriptions and banners. And we also have additional description over here. And over here, we are utilizing what we call a tab list menu. So what, I've, uh, what has been added here is uh, some of the restaurants and fun places of San Diego. And you have the list of restaurants on the left-hand side and a 3D scene map on the right-hand side. So the list here is quite interactive. So it's been put in a pagination format. So you have uh, five kind of restaurants within a page. So you don't have to scroll from top to bottom. This is actually a good design for a desktop. And for the fun places, now you have a 2D map over here with the same design and the uh, items on the left-hand side over here. Also similar design, we are using the pagination format. So let's go back over here. I'm going to back to go to the restaurants. So now I'm working with the dynamic 3D scene over here. You, just, you, can, you can start to see that I can play around with it. So let's say I have a particular restaurant. I can click on that one, and it's going to be highlighted on the map, so as you can see here. So you can still move around the 3D scenes to get a view of where the location of this restaurant is. And let's move on to the fun places. So we have a similar concept. Let's pick one of these places over here. If I click on that, it's going to actually zoom into my 2D map. So there you go. And what else? I can actually click on this point here to get some information. So this is actually the pop-up. So we can have some description of this place over here. 
and perhaps an actual image. So I can also click on the detail button over here. So what's going to happen is that it's going to open up a second page of the application. So that's the interesting feature of the Experience Builder. You're not only limited to one page. So this is a sub page, which gives you more information and also a sub map of the San Diego National History Museum. So let's head back. I'm going to go down over here. So let's take a look at the next component. So the next design that has been added here is actually the featured places. So it utilizes, it utilizes a card-like design put side by side. And if you go down, there's going to be a different design over here, stacked on top of each other, some of other interesting places. And we also have a button over here that you can actually, if we click on that, it actually takes you to the actual web page of the place. So let me go back. And down here, lastly, we can even embed YouTube videos. So you can put this over here. So this is actually a video of the San Diego. So that's how this sample application looks like when you view it on a desktop. So to actually visualize the experience, let's take a look at how it looks like on a mobile. So I'm going to open up the same application. So you start to see it gives you a different experience. So this is where it pushes uh, a, to a mobile adaptive view. So you have the same look and feel over here. You have the title on the left-hand side. As you can see, the menu on the right-hand side has been fit, uh, put into place to fit the mobile phone. You, you have kind of like a drop-down menu over here instead of side-by-side. -side. So if I were to scroll down over here, so I still have the restaurants and fun places as a tab. So I have the list now as a scrolling. So this is actually better in mobile to actually have a scrolling view because we have a, a vertical screen. And as you can see, the map on the right is no more there. So this is by design to actually fit the screen. So you don't have to zoom in and zoom out. So actually the map is still there. So how are we going to visualize that? Let's take a look over here. I can click on the details page. So it's going to take me to the next page or the sub page. And you'll be presented with some of the details of the actual location over here. And you still have the map. So let's go back. So if we go down over here and start to look at the next component, which is the featured places. Now you start to see that all of these items are stacked on top of each other. So it, this one is actually a better view for mobile. And also, I'll still have the YouTube video down there. So as you can see, I've built two different experiences using the same website. So that's the capability of the Experience Builder. Now, let's head over to the editor and create a one simple application. So if I will click on the launcher, let's go to the Experience Builder. And I'll be presented to this page. So you can start off by selecting any templates that you want. There's loads of templates to choose from over here. So this one, I'm going to use the blank full screen. I'm going to create something simple from scratch. And it's going to be presented. I'm going to be presented with this page over here, which is the working space, the workspace, this canvas. Let me resize this to actually view everything. Now, the first thing I want to do, I'll go to the widgets over here. Let's put a map inside here. So I'm going to showcase some of the shopping malls that are available in Penang, Malaysia. So I can snap this to the left, and I can set the full width. And I can drag this to actually do manual sizing over here. Or I can go to the style over here and actually put a 50% width. So it's going to snap 50% to the canvas nicely. Right? So let's work on the content of the map. I'm going to select the map over here, and I'm going to, I've got just one map, map over here that actually shows you some of the shopping malls that are available in Penang. And let's take a look at how it's going to be viewed as a live view. I can, I can navigate there. And there you go. So now I have a simple map on the left-hand side. So let's work on the right-hand side. Perhaps I want to put some lists, the names of the shopping mall. So I can use the list widget for this one. So easily I can just drag in and drop. 
And I'm going to use the snap feature as well. Snap to the right, and I'll use the full height. And just to make it equal, I'm going to put the same width over here. And within the context, you you can content you can also select a template for this particular list widget. So I'm going to select this one. So I'm going to start and going to relate it to the actual data, which is the shopping mall over here. Okay, so it starts to populate all the lists based on the numbers of shopping malls I have. So let's start on designing the icons. So I'm going to click on the icon and I'm going to go for dynamic. So within the attribute table, I have a column that actually stores uh, the link to the thumbnail URL. So if I click on that one, so it automatically loads. So let's move on. Let's say, let's for example put a name. So I can I can, I can also do the same a dynamic. I have a column that actually shows the name, and it's going to automatically populate that. As you can see, I can do it quickly. So now I have an icon, I have a name. Moving on, I have the button. So let's rename this a bit to maybe more info. And what I'm going to do is that set the action of this button. So for example, if a person were to click this button, it's going to open up the uh, official web page of the mall. So I could set the link. And I'm going to click on this one, uh, Windows, oops, uh, web address, right? and. Also, I'm going to use a dynamic approach. I have an attribute that actually stores the website URL. And it's going to read from that one. I'm going to click on New Window and click on OK. So there you go. So I'm going to save this one. Now I'm going to preview this, how it's going to look like live. And you're going to get something like this. So you have a map that showcases the location. And on the right hand side, I have all the lists that actually shows uh, the shopping malls. So what I'll do is that I'm going to click the more info and you start to see that it's going to open up the official uh, web page on a new tab. So you see, that's how easily I can use the experience builder to come up with a web page or a web application. So moving on. Let's take a look at the uh, availability of the product. Okay, so you actually have three products offering. So the experience builder can be accessible through via the ArcGIS Online, and you have the developer edition, which is the uh, extensible extensible version of it, and the latest one, which is which is available in the ArcGIS Enterprise Edition. So looking at the uh, release plan timeline, uh, so the ArcGIS Online and the developer edition is actually available since 2019. And in 2020, we are introducing the first public release of the Algis Enterprise Edition. So that means if you install the Enterprise 10.8, you're going to get the new experience builder. So to wrap up my session, let's take a look at some of the key takeaways. Uh, first of all, the Algis JavaScript API actually continues to mature, providing a basic, more sophisticated, and responsive foundation for web mapping app development. And next is the built with flexibility and performance in mind. So Experience Builder actually enables you to, be to do better and actually do more. And the third one is Experience Builder is the next generation uh, web application offering from Esri. So let's take a look at some of the resources. So if you are interested in uh, learning more on the Experience Builder, you can head over to these links. And these are some of the links that actually I use to actually uh, build my presentation today. And this actually brings us to the end of the session, and I'm going to open up the Q&A session. Thank you.